Hi, and welcome back. This is part 2 in a short video series covering the advanced W item glitches in Final Fantasy 7. Most veteran Final Fantasy players know about the W item glitch, but there are a few more complex versions of the technique that are less well known. This series aims to cover each of the advanced methods comprehensively. In part 1 we covered the basic W item glitch and the steel version of the technique. I highly recommend that you view that video before this one. Without the fundamental understanding of the W item glitch you will find this tutorial almost impossible to follow. In this episode we will cover the morph technique as well as another more advanced version of it. So, without further ado, let's begin. The basic morph version of the W item glitch is one of the most popular of the advanced techniques. Players use it to rapidly farm sources like power sources, luck sources and speed sources. These items increase character stats, like speed, strength, luck and evade. Unfortunately the basic version of the morph technique cannot duplicate magic sources, which increase magic attack, or mind sources, which increase spirit. Because the basic technique cannot duplicate those two items, I personally never use this method. However, the advanced version can. Be warned though, that version is far more complicated. We will get to the advanced technique shortly. This, more basic version, allows you to duplicate any item that is created when you use morph on an enemy. But, if you are fighting only one enemy, killing it will end the battle. You can't perform any version of the W item glitch after a battle has ended. So, in order to use this glitch you must be fighting at least two opponents. The only creature that can be morphed into a mind source is the serpent. Similarly, the only creature that can be morphed into a magic source on disc 3 is the unknown 3. Both of these creatures only appear by themselves. That is why magic sources and mind sources can't be duplicated using this method. Nevertheless, you can use this glitch to quickly get 99 sources from the following enemies in a single battle. Luck sources. From an enemy called Bad Rats in the Sunken Jelnica. Speed sources from Poodlers, also found in the Jelnica. God sources from an enemy called Bagladrana, on the tracks between Coral and the Coral Reactor. And also from Spirals, in the Midial area. Power sources from Screamers in the Nibel Mountains. You can also use it to rapidly duplicate 99 Protect Rings from Movers in the Northern Crater. Executing the basic morph technique is almost identical to the steel method. So, if you managed to follow the previous video, this will be a piece of cake to understand. In order to morph any creature, you must issue the morph command as the killing blow. Because morph is a feeble attack, you must sufficiently weaken your opponent first. Obviously, you don't want to kill your opponent with any other attack. There are a few simple methods of weakening enemies without killing them. Firstly, gravity materia. High-level gravity materia is great for reducing your opponent's HP without killing them. This is typically the best strategy to use. Demi 3 reduces your enemy's HP by 3 quarters, Demi 2 reduces their HP by half, and Demi 1 reduces their HP by just 1 quarter. Alternatively you can use TS bombs, that can be stolen from Glows in the Gold Saucer area, or the laser enemy skill. Laser can be learned from Death Claws in the Coral Prison, or from Dock Dragons in the Northern Crater. Both of these alternatives will reduce your enemy's HP by half. One other alternative is to use L4 Suicide. This only works if your opponent has a level that is a multiple of 4. You can learn this enemy skill from Moose in the Chocoba Ranch area. This skill only works on a select few enemies, but when it does, it will instantly diminish their health to almost nothing. The next important note is the special ability Yuffie possesses. Her ultimate weapon is the Conformer. It is found in the Sunken Jalika Plain. 
This weapon is unique, because it allows her to morph enemies with 100% attack power. In other words, if this weapon is equipped, when Yuffie uses morph, it will do as much damage as a regular attack. This makes Yuffie an invaluable asset for late-stage grinding. The drawback of the Conformer is that Materia does not grow on it. So, if you are anxiously awaiting the level up of a piece of Materia, do not equip it to Yuffie's Conformer. Now that we know how to quickly weaken enemies and kill them with Morph as the final blow, we can get into the glitch. Make sure you have used up every instance of the source you are trying to acquire in your item inventory. If you own any copies of the source you are trying to acquire, the glitch won't work. Just like the steel technique you must arrange your items menu, so that you have a dummy item in the uppermost slot, and are usable in the slot below. As usual I'm using a green as my dummy item. You should own, one and only one, of this item. You can buy greens cheaply from the Chocobo Ranch. They equip Yuffie with the Conformer and Morph Materia. Give your other characters Demi and W item. Now we're all set, it's time to get into a battle. In this example I'll be morphing a spiral enemy near Medieval and obtaining 99 god sources. First weaken your enemy sufficiently by casting Demi, or one of the alternatives mentioned earlier. Select Morph while your enemy is attacking, or an ally is casting magic. Then quickly select W item. Select the dummy item, select the recipient, then wait for a moment. Once the opponent is successfully morphed into an item, select your usable item, but cancel it. Select it again. Cancel it again. Select again and cancel, select, cancel, select, cancel. Repeat. Just like the steam technique, the dummy item is replaced with the stolen item. Just remember, at least, one enemy must be alive, while you are executing the W item glitch. If there are no enemies alive, the battle will end, and you will have no time to execute the move. Unlike the steel technique, there is almost no luck involved. Let's recap the morph technique again in brief. Equip Yuffie with the conformer and give her a copy of morph. Equip your other party members with Demi. Equip any party member apart from Yuffie with W item. Organize your items, so that your dummy item is in the uppermost slot, and your usable item is in the second slot. Make sure you have no sources in your item list. Enter a battle. Cast Demi 3 enough times to weaken your enemy. While any attack animation is playing, select Morph. Then, quickly select W item. Use the dummy item. Then wait. Wait, wait. Once the Morph item is successfully returned, repeatedly select and cancel the usable item. You will see the Morphed item is duplicating in the uppermost slot as you select and deselect the item in the second slot. Next, we are going to cover the Advanced Morph Glitch. This is, by far, the most intricate of the W item glitches. To execute it, you need your materia set up in a very specific way. Before we get to that though, let's recap the basic preparations. Just like the regular morph glitch, you need to organize your item inventory. Put your dummy item in the top slot, and put any usable item in the second slot. Of course, we need to get rid of every source we currently own. Otherwise when we morph an enemy, the item will stack on top of the previously owned sources, rather than appearing in the first slot. It's helpful to not give sources that increase defense stats, to Yuffie, until all of your other characters are maxed out. Particularly luck sources. Luck sources will increase her evade rate. Because it's important, that Yuffie is attacked. Her ability to evade stifles progress. Because this is a grind, and we will have to repeat this process over and over, I've customized my inventory, a step further. I have moved items down the list, to create a big empty space, at the top of my inventory. This large empty space is going to house my acquired sources, and my dummy items. 
between each battle, I will need to reorganize my item inventory. I will have to use up every acquired source, and move a new green into the top slot. It is inevitable, that a party member will die, while executing this glitch, so I've played Phoenix Downs near the top of the list for convenience. Now it is time to prepare our party and equipment. It is almost essential, that Yuffie is in your party. She should be equipped with her ultimate weapon, the Conformer. Because this strategy is typically used for grinding for sources, we will be using the technique almost exclusively in the Jelnica. The enemies down there are some of the toughest in the game, and some have the ability to confuse party members. You can use a ribbon or a peace ring to protect from confuse. Next, let's talk about the Materia setup. Firstly, you need two copies of final attack materia. This can only be won one time in Battle Square. To acquire it, you have to beat the special battle. In order to get the second copy of final attack, you need to grow the one you win from Battle Square to master. Once it is mastered, a new one will be born. You also need two copies of revive materia. You can buy this at Junan. It is preferable that you level both of these up as well, so that you can cast life too. Additionally you need Quadra Magic and HP MP Swap Materia. Both of these can be found by searching the map on well-bred Chocobos. HP MP Swap is found in a cave just north of Coral. Quadra Magic is found on an island near Middeal. You should also level up a couple of copies of Demi to level 3. And also, learn the L4 Suicide Enemy skill from Moose near the Chocobo Ranch. I know, that was quite a long shopping list, so let's put it in brief. You need two copies of Final Attack, two copies of Life, preferably at level 2, one copy of Quadra Magic, one copy of Morph Materia, one copy of HP MP Swap. You also need L4 Suicide on an enemy skill. Finally, Get a couple of copies of Demi leveled up to level 3. Now that we have everything we need, you must set up your materia in a very specific way. Here we go. Set up Yuffie's materia exactly as I show you here. In the first slot of her weapon, place Morph materia. In the second slot place Final Attack. In the third slot place Revive. In the fourth slot place your second Final Attack. In the fifth slot place your second Revive. In the 6th slot place Quadro Magic. In the 7th slot place HP MP Swap. Remember, set up the materia on Yuffie's weapon exactly as I show you here. The order of the materia matters. The reason for this elaborate setup is to create a chain of counter-attacks that will extend the end of the battle long enough to execute the W item glitch after your final opponent is killed. If Yuffie dies, final attack will be triggered twice. Firstly, Yuffie will morph your opponent. Secondly, she will cast life 2. But, because she also has life 2 linked to Quadro Magic, she will cast life 4 times, in a row. We gave her HP MP Swap, to reduce her max HP to 999, and increase the likelihood of her getting killed when attacked. There's just a few other pieces of materia to equip, before we can see the glitch in action. Any character apart from Yuffie needs W item equipped. Equip as many instances of enemy skill and demi to your characters as you have available. Beyond that you can set up your materia however you like, but it is recommended that you do not equip any sort of counter materia on any party member apart from the final attacks on Yuffie's weapon. Now we're all set, it's time to get into a battle. In this first battle we are fighting an enemy called an unknown. There are three types of these in the Jelnica. We tackle all of them in exactly the same way. Unknown ones will morph into power sources, unknown twos will morph into guard sources and unknown threes morph into magic sources. Firstly we need to weaken the enemy. Two or three hits of Demi is almost always enough to get the job done. Next, simply select W item. 
Use the dummy item in the top slot then scroll down to the second slot and wait. Wait, wait. Eventually Yuffie will be attacked, and, with a bit of luck, the attack will kill her, and trigger the chain reaction. Keep waiting until the item has been successfully returned to the top slot of your inventory. Once it appears, rapidly start selecting and cancelling the usable item in your second slot. You only have a limited window of time, but once you get comfortable with the technique, you can quite easily get an excess of 70 sources per battle. If both copies of Yuffie's live materia are at level 2, the animation will last slightly longer than it does if she only has life 1. This will give you slightly more time. Now that you have a bunch of sources, use them immediately. If you try to acquire more of the same type of source, they will stack on top of your previously owned sources and the glitch won't work. Also remember, it's a bad idea to give defensive sources to Yuffie. Only boost her defensive stats when all your other characters are maxed out. Also, remember to rearrange your inventory and make sure you have a green in your top slot. Next we will fight a serpent. This is exactly the same as fighting unknowns. The only difference is the serpent is immune to Demi, so instead we use Elf or Suicide to weaken them. Just as before, we weaken the serpent. Begin the W item glitch. Wait for Yuffie to die. Then, when the morphed item is returned to our inventory, begin rapidly selecting and cancelling the usable item in our second slot. Before moving on, I should mention that, unlike the previous methods, it's much easier to perform the advanced morph glitch with your ATB mode set to active or recommended. If it is set to wait, the enemy won't attack while the items menu is open. Finally, when applying sources to your characters it appears like there is no limit to how many sources you can give them, but this is not the case. There is a hidden cap beyond 255, so don't stop giving sources to your characters until you physically can't give them any more. Two more enemies that the advanced morph technique is useful for are Cactuas and Ghost Ships. Ghost ships morph into guidebooks, which is an item that you can exchange for the underwater materia in Calm. This item can be sold, and it can only be exchanged one time. Because of that it is vital that you don't pick up more than one of these before you pull this glitch off. If you do, there's no way of removing the item from your inventory. Ghost ships are found in the tunnel leading to the Junan underwater reactor. These enemies are also vulnerable to L4 suicide. But because they only have 6600 HP, Yuffie is capable of morphing them in a single hit. It can be a little fiddly, as the ghost ship is able to permanently knock party members out of the battle with a Gonai attack. Cactuas morph into an armor called Tetra Elemental. These creatures only have 6000 HP, so it's quite likely that you won't need to bother weakening them at all. Just select W item, use the dummy item and wait for Yuffie to counter. Cactuas are found in the desert, just outside the cave, where you find HP, MP, Swap, or on a tiny island, almost directly south of Cosmo Canyon. The final enemy that we're going to take a look at are Master Tunberries, found in the Northern Crater. These enemies are immune to all the methods of weakening that we've already covered. Characters with significantly high attack power shouldn't have too much trouble though. In this example you can see Cloud quickly wipes the Tunberry down to minimal health with just one instance of 4 times cut. Probably the most irritating thing about Master Tunberries is the sheer length of time it takes for them to attack you. Any time now. Come on. Stab me. Thanks. 
They're also immune to sense, but we know that their max HP is 44,444. So, to morph a Tunberry with little hassle, you can use a couple of tricks. Firstly, you can throw coin at them. For every 100 gil you throw, it will do one point of damage. So throwing 100,000 gil will reduce their HP by 9,999. Do this four times and the Tunberry will morph on the next hit, provided Yuffie's attack does 4,448 damage or higher. Of course you can spend a little extra cash to weaken the Tunberry even further. A more cost-effective, but complicated method, is to use a combination of the question mark enemy skill, HP plus materia, MP plus materia, and HP MP swap. To do this, equip enough plus materia to max out a character's health and MP. Then heal that character up fully, so both their magic points and health are full. After that, equip HP MP swap, but immediately unequip it. This will lower your HP to 999 points, but your max health will be 9999. Now, when you cut that question mark enemy skill, it will do precisely 9000 points of damage. This will drop the Tunberry's health to 8444 in just 4 hits. A combination of the two methods can be a fast and cost-effective strategy. For example, use question mark four times and finish up by throwing 80,000 gil. This will reduce the Tunberry's health to 444, and you'll easily kill the Tunberry in a single hit at any level. You can gain the question mark enemy skill from the Shinra Mansion in Nibelheim. It is cast by jerseys. They will only cast it if they've not been damaged. A couple of final notes about Tunberries. Its knife attack causes instant death. Equip safety bits or Odin plus added effect on your armor to defend against this. Obviously, don't equip these to Yuffie though. Also, the damage dealt by its attack called everyone's grudge is equal to the number of enemies a party member has killed, multiplied by 10. So it can be worth tackling the master Tunberry with a character you never normally use. There's nothing left to say about the glitches. However, some people really struggle to grasp the advanced morph glitch. I strongly advise that you knuckle down and learn it because it is such a valuable method. If it simply does not make any sense to you at all, all of the items can be acquired by manually grinding for them one at a time. The most valuable items, mind sources, magic sources and ribbons, can all be acquired in the special battle at Battle Square. The creatures that provide them always appear in the second round, the third round and the fourth. But, once again, I do not recommend this strategy at all. That about wraps it up for episode 2. I hope newcomers manage to follow along with the important points. And I hope veterans learned a couple of new tricks. There are timestamps for easy navigation, links, and some additional information in the description. In the next episode we will be covering the throw technique and the reverse steel method. For those that would like a more succinct video, all the glitches will be included in the upcoming compendium. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment. I hope to see you in part 3. Goodbye.